This year, my New Year's resolution was to spend less time coding and more time in the real world. But by midnight, I had already failed. But this midnight coding session led me down a rabbit hole that I couldn't escape. A year ago, I built this learning piano app in Swift UI. It was one of the first apps that I ever created in Swift UI, and the code is bad. I mean, like, really bad. <laughs> and people are downloading it. People are actually using it. To my surprise, it currently ranks number nine in the App Store for the keyword Learn Piano. So I got the thought in my head and wondered what would happen if I rebuilt the app using all the techniques I've learned over the last year in Swift UI. Could I increase the ranking and get even more people downloading it? So I did what any self-respecting independent app developer would do. At midnight, I decided to rebuild the entire app from scratch. Hi, my name's Adam Lytle. I'm an independent app developer who accidentally made a six-figure business building and distributing consumer apps on the App Store. Now I document my journey on YouTube. I'm not the first, and I certainly won't be the last, to create an app to learn the piano. There's plenty of apps out there that try to do this. And there's even games in the arcade. We stumbled across Grand Piano Keys. This is an app with four keys that have falling blocks that you can tap in time and speed through it as quickly as you possibly can. It's great, it's a lot of fun, but I do often wonder why are we replicating pianos instead of actually having these games that have proper piano keys and proper songs? If you finish a level, you haven't only just memorized the sequence of events, but you've also learnt a skill, you've also learnt a song at the end of it. So I wanted to bring the gamification of learning piano into the app. I want to reward speed and I want to reward accuracy. And I also want people to restart as many times as possible until they've finished the sequence accurately. What I've learned from my own experience learning the piano, I only know one song. And that one song I learned from just doing it over and over and over. I can play Itsy Bitsy Spider flawlessly because I memorized it. My muscle memory is there. I did it many times over. I did it as quickly as I possibly could and just built that muscle memory. And this is great if you're an impressed two-year-olds, but it's not so great when you get onto a public piano or a friend's house and you want to do something impressive. So this app that I'm building isn't to teach you how to learn the fundamentals of playing a piano. And it's not to gamify it to the point where it's an abstraction of playing a piano. It's that middle ground. Someone like me who doesn't really wanna spend hours learning the piano, but just wants to be able to get onto the piano to play a song and impress friends. But this holiday season, I've really noticed something. Something's really stood out to me. And that is that I've left friendships and relationships around me atrophy. When I do catch up with friends, everything's quite superficial. It's the how's work, how's the family, how's kids. And I realize what I've been doing is throwing myself into family, throwing myself into work, and throwing myself into all of my commitments, letting all of the relationships around me just dwindle off. And that's partly on me. I haven't invested the time and energy in creating that friendship group and connecting out with people. And even when I do, other blokes are busy and everyone's busy all the time with family and, and their own work. So this year, my New Year's resolution is to focus on what's important, 